If Jesus Christ returned already, then what are we doing here today? Why are we even here today? This is a question that I get asked the most whenever I say indeed that Christ returned in 70 AD. As you will see after today, I'm going to show you from the Old Testament why this question, and I mean this in all sincerity and love, is a stupid question to ask. That question today being asked is very telling of where modern Christianity is, the mindset that they are in. Now, again, I understand the question. I have been raised for 22 years being told that Jesus is going to come in our future. And so I'm going to read from you what Daniel said about the kingdom of the Messiah. Just to give you a little bit of background, this was after the Israelites came into exile in Babylon after the first temple destruction. Daniel is getting prophecies about the second temple being rebuilt and God bringing the Messiah. And a part of that he mentions the kingdom of this Messiah, this Ancient of Days, the Son of Man. It mentions a very interesting thing about who he hands this kingdom over to. We're going to read. I watched as thrones were put in place, and the Ancient One, or the Ancient of Days, sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire, and a river of fire was pouring out flowing from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend him. Then the courts began its session and the books were opened. So in this scene, we see what looks like God in the midst of his heavenly courts. We see thrones being prepared. Now watch what Daniel says further on in this vision. As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient One and was led into his presence. Now I'm going to stop here. I believe that this is a mistranslation of what the original was actually trying to say. If you read what the Greek Septuagint says about this very passage, it actually connects the Son of Man to the Ancient of Days. It says the Son of Man came as the Ancient of Days. This is a lot more in line with what we see in Revelations 1, how Jesus is the Ancient of Days. It's not talking about two people here. It's saying that the Son of Man is coming on the clouds as the Ancient of Days. He approached the Ancient One and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nation of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Continue on. Look what it says. But in the end, the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom and they will rule forever and ever. Okay, the saints of the Holy One, the people who hold on to the testimony of who Christ was. It mentions those people taking the authority and the rule of that kingdom. Watch what it says later down in verse 26. But then the court will pass judgment and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will last forever and all rulers will serve and obey him. So twice in Daniel 7, it mentions the holy people of the Most High ruling that kingdom. So Christians, what are we supposed to do today? Is that not a stupid question to ask in all honesty and love? Look at the world around us. Have you not seen what has happened? Why has the church not taken dominion like the Bible says that they need to? Why has the church gone silent on belief systems like Zionism or Islam? Belief systems that are literally taking up ground, ground that Christianity and what the Bible stood for used to hold. Are you guys okay with being on the defensive all the time? Or are you guys going to start living this thing out? Instead of being stuck in this book, are you going to do what this book says? Because look around us, this world is not looking good right now. And a major, major reason why that is, is the theology, the ideology of Zionism. And why has the church not spoken up about this? This is blatant antichrist. And so the question of what should we do if Jesus Christ has already returned, we have a world to subjugate. And I use that word with the weight that is intended with that word. We have a world to subjugate. How in the world did we get stuck being on the defensive the whole time? How did we get stuck being okay with losing ground in culture, in media? in political office, what are we doing? 
And a lot of people will just say, look around us. How in the world can we have that dominion, that authority? Christians are being persecuted here, persecuted there. Well, guess what? In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, when Jesus said, therefore, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Did it really look like it when he was saying it? Jesus was probably saying it to a small group of people. Did it really look like he was the king of heaven and earth in that moment? No. But was he? Yes. And so are we right now? Absolutely. So what should we do? Stand up.